Welcome to the New Life Behavior International video cast and podcast series. Presented by volunteer instructors, the New Life Behavior International series is presented in countries globally and in several on the African continent. Courses are available on nlbi.co.za and is absolutely free of charge. However, donations are welcome and completely voluntary. The core curriculum is a comprehensive study to discover a meaningful and personal relationship with God, with the objective to help individuals from all walks of life to be reconciled to God, reconciliation to families and society. The curriculum contains 174 lessons divided into 14 courses and is well received by both Christians and non-Christians alike. All the lessons are available on our website nlbi.co.za and you may communicate via email info at nlbi.co.za The outline of the curriculum is explained by volunteer instructor Oscar de Vries. These lessons will cover the following A sense of self A sense of family Parenting matters True freedom Christian marriage skills, Christian women, attitudes and behaviors, Christians against substance abuse, is a family net series, the seeker Bible study series, prisoners of Christ, managing my anger, Christians against sex addiction, managing my finance. In this way we say welcome to New Life Behavior Ministries. Good day listeners and if you're watching or listening great to have you back today we find ourselves still in course 7 attitudes and behaviors and we're in lesson five that is the word courage um in afrikaans or if you international dutch it's the word moed lovely word not moed which is tired but moed which is courage and courage has to do with the strength to face up to in, again, in Afrikaans or Dutch, it's the word dapper, which means we have the strength to face up to. So great to see you, and, and if you're listening, you can get all of these lessons on nlbi.co.za or internationally if you need to, nlbi.net. You'll get the lessons, you can print them, you can study them. You can listen to the video casts, which are going to, which are many over many courses. And thank you to um, Unlock uh, Radio Live that that's helping us to be able to present these video casts. So we get to the word courage. You know, courage does not always come to us naturally or easily. In fact. It seldom comes that way. Courage is the inner strength to be what God has called us to be. As Christians, courage is that inner strength to be what God has called us to be. Courage is connected to all the other virtues. Let's call it a virtue. I always want to say some of these words we don't always understand, but it means a virtue is a high moral standard. Now, it's interesting that courage is actually called a cardinal virtue or moral standard. Now, cardinal, we don't always understand. We know there's a bird called cardinal, but if you look at certain religious persuasions and you look at the words as they go, they go up, you know, and eventually they get to bishop, and then the bishop, if you're, a, if you're one step above the bishop, then you're a cardinal. So it's a hierarchy. And that's what it's saying. That's why it's the cardinal virtue. It's a virtue that's 
a virtue or a, a moral standard that seems to stand a little above the others. But the interesting thing is, you know, if you take a door, a door has got hinges. When you open and close a door, I wouldn't say a sliding door, but a normal door, it's got a hinge. And that door is able to move because of the hinge. Now, the hinge, in fact, is, is courage. That is the, 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 the word courage really, in a sense, in a figure of speaking, is the hinge. And it's courage that works with things like, for instance, justice or prudence. Prudence means a cautious person or people that are cautious. And temperance, which means moderation. And fortitude, which means endurance. And again, Afrikaans Dutch, eight hou vermoor. And this courage is the hinge on which others depend. And it's a center point. In, 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 in all of the virtues. And being just or being temperate requires courage. So you can be a person that's self-controlled and, and a moderate person, but to enact that requires an element of courage. And then I said, what does it mean to be virtuous? Well, it's a high moral standard. It's, it's talking about principles. In Afrikaans, again, it's a uh, dear psalm. It's, it's, it's almost like a yeast for a bread, you know. It's, 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 it's structured. It's strong. And, and what he does here, he says, it behaves in admirable ways out of its inner strength. And here we look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 17, 18, when, when the example of the tree is used. It says, from the inside of the tree, it produces good fruit. And that's what courage is. It's that sort of inside item that produces and blends itself with all of the other virtues. So, so courage comes in many forms. You know, we get the battle or the cowboys. That's now the fight. Or courage belongs in social justice. And, and there are many people to mention, Martin, Martin Luther King and these people, in social justice, in moral ethics. There's courage in moral ethics, ethics and exercising those ethics. In spiritual freedoms, there is also the word courage. See, courage is the stuff or the thing that keeps a person holding true to some belief or some virtue. It's the hinge. And courage is the strength to live out justice and wisdom and temperance and faith and hope and love. It's the hinge. Courage is needed to do the right thing when it's the most difficult thing to do. Now, let's talk about courage and truth a little bit. See, courage starts with knowing and understanding what truth is. This doesn't come, it's based on understanding what truth is. And the root of courage lies in one's willingness to commit to the truth, both about God and about humans. And courage helps us to live it out or act on it accordingly. You know, I would like to say that real courage, one of the characteristics of real courage is that there are no discriminations in our lives, which is a very important factor in life generally today. But that's courage, the courage to live out and act on, on things accordingly. Courage is the living out of the truth. That's what I've just said. What we hear and what we read is not always the truth, unfortunately. We hear many things through the media and the pop culture and that are not true. And discerning what the truth is and acting on it takes courage. There is nothing more courageous than learning the truth about yourself, especially when we see the need of change. We have the courage to learn about myself and learn about God and acting on that. 
there was a gentleman, Clark, J.F. Clark, and he said, conscience is the root of all true courage. If a man would be brave, let him obey his conscience. And uh, I think that's quite an important statement. So why we ask ourselves today, is courage important? Again, I go back to this gentleman, Stephen Shoemaker, and he says, there are three, th three th threats, sorry, threats to our self-affirmation. In other words, the assertion of the existence and the value of one's individual self. There are three threats. And he says, the one is the anxiety or the fear of death. Secondly, he says, the anxiety or the fear of a meaninglessness in our lives. And also the anxiety of guilt. Now, when you or something you hold dear is threatened, that's the time you make a choice. And courage is that virtue, that moral standard, that moral compass is perhaps even a stronger word that gives rise to our response. And we say to ourselves, will we act out the lie? Or will we act out the truth with courage and conviction? Uh, John F. Kennedy made a statement. He was the president of the United States many years ago that was assassinated. And he said, the courage of life is often a less dramatic spectacle than the courage of a final moment. But it is no less a magnificent mixture of triumph and tragedy. A man does what he must in spite of personal consequences, in spite of obstacles and dangers and pressures. And that is the basis of all morality. Quite a statement, but courage is important because it is the thing that brings a person to hold on to other virtues in a time of crisis. It helps us to make that decision based on what we want to do in acting out truth. And then another writer, there's so many people that have contributed to this, C.S. Lewis, Lewis, who's well known for all of his writings, he said, courage is not simply one of the virtues, but the form of every virtue at the testing point, which means at the point of highest reality. Think about everything that we've talked about, temperance and, 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 um, and prudence or caution and all of the, the, the behaviors we've spoken about. It says that courage, when the testing point comes, courage kicks in. You see, courage is holding on to justice when others are clamoring for injustice and knowing the right thing and to do it. There are a lot of people who talk about doing good. And a lot of people argue about what is good and what is not good. But there are other folks who just put their lives on the line for what is right. That's courage. In the book of Daniel, there's a story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we, I think there's a joke that says, it's shake a bed, make a bed, and in you go. That's the way you remember these names. But they were faced by one of the, the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar. And people got Nebuchadnezzar to sort of get an edict that everybody would bow down before him and the gods of Nebuchadnezzar until along came Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they said, oh, king, we are not going to bow down. He said, I'll give you a last chance. And the trumpet sound, you can go and read it in Daniel 3. A lot of facts, which I'm not going to try and repeat. But he says, no, no, okay, we'll give another chance. When the trumpet sound and everything happens, everybody's going to bow down to me. And they said, we ain't going to do that. And so he said, I'll tell you what, you're going into that fiery furnace. He said, I'm going to heat it seven times hotter. And so he, he, he it said it was so hot that the people, the Sanhedrin or the soldiers standing outside, were killed by the fierceness of this fire. 
And when they went in there, were put in there, clothes and all, bound up, handcuffed, if you want to put it that way. And it's interesting, it says that Nebuchadnezzar watched. There were four people in there. Now, I don't know that we really know who the fourth person was, but when it was all finished, they came out, he said, they were in perfect condition. Not even a hair on the head was singed, and they didn't even smell of smoke. And this changed the mind of Nebuchadnezzar. Because they said they were willing to risk their lives for the sake of being true to the truth. It, and he said, if we, if, if your gods are not the true gods, we will not bow down to idols. And these men knew the truth. It's a lovely story, but it illustrates some people are prepared to sacrifice themselves for that, that which they know is right. And that, at the testing point, needs courage. Now, these examples show us that courage is living out your convictions despite personal consequences. We think life's just a you know, sail in the moonlight, but it ain't, it isn't. And there are consequences sometimes because of our courage. Now, let's ask, how do we nurture? Like a mother nurtures a baby. How do we grow courage? Well, let's start with Christ. Look at the model of Jesus. He was a Jew. And the legitimacy of his birth was questioned. And now, was he an illegitimate child? And then his life work was so radical that his family thought that he was nuts that he was crazy, and he was betrayed by one of his closest friends, by a disciple, and he was falsely arrested, tried on trumped-up charges, and he was tortured, and then he faced death. So Jesus lived with courage. His courage was anchored in the truth of his relationship with the Father and in the truth of his calling. And I'd like to think that Paul, the Apostle Paul, was a similar man. When he came to Jesus, Acts 22, 16, it says when he came to Jesus, he anchored himself in the truth and his relationship with God. You see, as we reflect on our lives, we are saying, if you're a believer or not a believer, and we're not being arrogant, we're not trying to be smart, we are saying, there's no greater model in life when it comes to courage and all of these other things than the model we have in Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 12 says, consider him, consider him, meaning Jesus who endure, endured such hostility from sinners against himself. He said, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. And we're, we're encouraged not to become discouraged. So first of all, Jesus is our model. Secondly, it says seek the truth and the truth about God and the truth of God. It says that, in other words, truth brings power. Real truth brings power. It says, you sh again, John chapter 8, verse 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Meaning that truth is power. It enables us. You people who know God and that they are valued to him don't have to waver in moments of decision. Having a clear vision of who God is, what his desires and passions are, gives us the ability to act with rising courage. Not arrogance. Not arrogance, but courage. And then also when we talk about Jesus, the model, the truth, then we go to the, the sustaining that takes place in the body of Christ, the church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the church that Jesus built. And here he talks about a togetherness. That's why he talks in, in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 about the meeting of the saints, which we are called. That's who we are. Not, not some big title, but he talks, us, talks about us as being his saints, 
And what he's saying, that doesn't mean be pure, pure and undefiled. It's just a, a word that Jesus or that God uses for us. And he says, we come together as the church. We communicate. We commune together. We do things together. We are a family. And that in itself helps us to have courage. You don't always have to have courage yourself. You can develop a courageous act by asking others and enjoying the, the support of others and listening to others to make the right decisions. So in Christ, we are one body. Ephesians chapter 4 speaks about the oneness that we have in Christ, and that is in the body, the church, whichever way you want to look at it. We are interconnected. You know, once we begin to know him and know that we are of value to him, that is to God, he will give us the courage to live according to what is right. I hope this has been of some encouragement to you today as we study these words and these lessons and fit them into the word of God. Father in heaven, we do not judge the world. We do not, do not want to look down on people. We do not want to discriminate. But Father, there are times when we have to stand up in our faith. We have to stand up in being your children. And Father, even in daily life, if we say, well, God, you're not our total reference in life, that we need to stand up with courage so that, Father, we can defend the things in life that are right, the things that are true, and sometimes with constant consequences. So we always pray for your strength and your closeness and your nearness. Father, give us strength and give us peace. Bless us today, Father, as we close this lesson in Christ's name. Amen. Now, just a few little easy tips. First of all, each lesson is going to ask you to note a few personal thoughts about the question that is asked. And then read the questions at the end of the lesson, but do not attempt to answer them. Then study or read the lesson. Then answer the questions and then give yourself the opportunity to write some personal reflections. And you are more than welcome to send your answers and questions to info at nlbi.co.za